Hi guys, Bone Zone here. We're going to go ahead and go over the occipital bone. And what you need to know about the occipital bone is that it's a bone that forms the posterior part of the calvaria and much of the base of the skull and contains foramen magnum. It's a single bone, unlike a lot of bones in the skull, which are paired bones. So the foramen magnum, like I told you, was right over here. And the foramen magnum is going to go and transmit the spinal cord. So this portion, anterior to the foramen magnum, is actually the basilar portion of the occipital bone, and it also conjoins with the sphenoid bone anteriorly. But this basilar portion, this right over here, this is technically called your clivus. So clivus, C-L-I-V-U-S, is right here, clivus. And now if we, if we flip the skull over and look at the posterior portion, this is going to be the pharyngeal tubercle. So on the inside of the skull, like right over here, we have clivus. On the outside, on the base of the skull, this is going to be our pharyngeal tubercle. And the pharyngeal tubercle is going to be the attachment point for the pharyngeal raphe. So make sure you make a note of that. I'm going to go ahead right now and outline the occipital bone for you. So this entire structure right over here, excluding the mastoid process, is occipital bone. And again, this is the basilar portion that conjoins with parts of the sphenoid. And right over here, we have our lateral pterygoid process and medial pterygoid process. And a whole bunch of other stuff that you guys know. And then right over here, what is this ripped out structure? That's our styloid process. So going back to, that was just a quick recap of other stuff so you guys could help orient yourselves, but this again was a pharyngeal tubercle, which was the attachment point for the pharyngeal raphe. Next to the pharyngeal tubercles, we have two condyles that we have to know, and these are occipital condyles. Occipital condyles will articulate with the superior articular facet of the atlas bone to make the atlanto-occipital joint. So C1, the superior articular facets of C1, will articulate with the occipital condyle which is here and here, and that will help form the atlanto-occipital joint. Posterior to the occipital condyle, we have a canal right over here. This canal is called your condylar canal, and the condylar canal is going to transmit the emissary vein. So make sure you note that this is the condylar canal transmitting the emissary vein. On the inside, you could actually make it out right over here. That's going to be our hypoglossal canal. So you can make it over here too. This is the hypoglossal canal. So the hypoglossal canal will transmit what nerve? The hypoglossal nerve. Very, very good. So the hypoglossal nerve will be transmitted through the hypoglossal canal. That's, that's pretty high yield, and make sure you make a note of that. So occipital condyle, pharyngeal tubercle, condylar canal, hypoglossal canal. So now let's go ahead and go look back inside the inside of the occipital bone. And what we need to note is that you could also see the hypoglossal canal inside right over here. My, my uh, probe is actually going into it. And then we also have to note another structure which is called the sulcus of the sigmoid sinus. The sulcus of the sigmoid sinus is right over here and it's S-shaped. So this is the sulcus of the sigmoid sinus. And it's going to go ahead and lead us into uh, the jugular foramen. So the jugular foramen has a certain certain structures that we need to know. And the jugular foramen, the structures that we need to know from it are cranial nerves 9, 10, and 11, which are glossopharyngeal, vagus, and accessory, respectively, as well as the internal jugular vein. So the body has a nice way of setting itself up so that way we could always count down from the holes on what we have to do. So we have 9, 10, and 11 right over here, and then 12 is right there. So 9, 10, and 11, bam, 12. And then also just make a note that this is also going to transmit, since it's called the jugular foramen, it's going to transmit the internal jugular vein. So very, very good. Make sure you make a note of that. So internal jugular vein, 9, 10, and 11, hypoglossal now, hypoglossal canal is going to transmit the hypoglossal nerve. Clivus. And now let's go back over here, which was the sulcus of the sigmoid sinus. So now we're going to go ahead and talk about the posterior structures of the skull. And then the posterior structures include the uh, occipital protuberances. So there's an external and an internal occipital protuberance. And, and an anatomical fact, a protuberance is going to be like a bump. It's going to be a, a structure that's protruding. So this is a occipital protuberance, and it's on the inside of the skull. So this is our internal occipital protuberance, which serves as the attachment point for the, uh, the transverse venous sinus. So just make sure that uh, from the internal occipital protuberance uh, you have laterally running on each side is the sulcus for the transverse sinus. So make sure you note that bilaterally you have extending from the internal occipital protuberance the sulcus for the transverse sinus. So now let's go ahead and talk about the external occipital protuberance which is right over here, this little bump. 
and the external uh, occipital protuberance is going to go ahead and serve as an attachment point for the ligamentum nuchi, or I want to also call it the nuchal ligament. So uh, make sure you know, make a note of that. The external occipital protuberance is the attachment point of what again? The ligamentum nuchi or nuchal ligament. So make a note of that. Now let's go ahead and talk about the nuchal lines. And the nuchal, before we talk about the nuchal lines, let's go ahead and talk about the occipital crest. So the external occipital crest, so this is the external occipital, uh, external occipital protuberance. The external occipital crest will be an edge that runs from the protuberance down towards the magnum. So this right over here, yeah, that's probably the best view I could give you. Uh, this right over here is our external occipital crest. And again, the external occipital crest will have the same function as the external occipital protuberance, which serves as an attachment point for what structure again? The ligamentum nuchi, or the nuchi ligament, whatever you want to call it. Um, right over here is the internal occipital protuberance like we talked about earlier, and that was the structure that shows uh, from, uh, from it extending bilaterally would be your, <clears throat> would be your transverse, and the sulcus for the transverse sinus, and run, running from it towards the magnum would be the, the internal occipital crest. So the internal occipital crest is uh, important for the attachment for the false cerebelli. So make sure you note that the attachment of the false cerebelli is the internal occipital crest. Now we're going to go ahead and talk about the nuchal lines. <coughs> the nuchal lines, the highest nuchal line you rarely ever see. The highest nuchal line, just make a note in your, in your mental mapping, is going to be somewhere over here. All right. Um, and then it's also going to be a structure that attaches the epicranial aponeuroses. It's hard to see, attaches the epicranial aponeuroses somewhere around where my pen is magically w waving its wand. And note that that's called the highest nuchal line. Uh, and I think that's probably going to be a low yield tag. So don't, don't spend all your time trying to look on Google or whatever where it is. Now the next tag that might be, it might be a little more high yield would be the superior occipital line. And the superior occipital line is, just follow my probe right over here. So the superior occipital line, the way that I, that I, the way that I think about it, I use my occipital protuberance as a, a landmark. And whatever is above my superior or occipital protuberance right around here would be my superior occipital line. I mean, there, that might be a little better. Above it is going to be my superior occipital line, which is going to... Uh, no, it's not called the occipital line. Make sure you note, this is the highest nuchal line. This one is going to be called my superior to my occipital protuberance would be my superior nuchal line. So it's called a nuchal line. I can't reiterate that enough. It's called a nuchal line. So make sure you call it superior nuchal line. And then right over here would be my inferior nuchal line, right over here. The superior nuchal line will be attachment for neck and back muscles, and the inferior nuchal line will also be attachment for back and neck muscles. But make sure you know, I think, I think a good way to remember it is the location of the occipital protuberance. And I've seen it in a couple other images, and I'll probably post that up here with the video of the image that shows one line that's above the occipital protuberance and one line that's around it or below. So that's pretty much it for the skull, or in terms of the occipital bone. And I don't know if I missed anything, but if I did, be sure to comment and let me know. And thank you very much.